The football boot market has been extremely hard to break into in the last 20 years, as Nike and Adidas have dominated the market ever since the 80s. The same year Nike released the famous Tiempo to rival Adidas' famous Copa Mundial. Since then, it's always been a battle of whether Nike or Adidas has been better. Statistics from 2023 show that over 86% of people who use football boots are using one of the two brands. But recently, their slice of the market has been slowly getting reduced from the rise of other companies. And one of the companies recently climbing the ranks right now is Skechers. So from the creative market strategy to their innovative football boot technology, let's look at the rise of Skechers football. First off, let's go back to 2022, a pivotal year in the football market. Nike had continued to release updated versions of their famous Mercurial and Tiempo lines and their new innovative Fanta line with the Phantom GT. Adidas took a similar approach releasing their X line with the updated Predators and their fresh Copa design. And Puma released their feature and Ultra lines, but we won't get into those. All of these boots were generally well received and the technology on them was more or less the same as it has been. With Nike adding their zoom cushioning into the Mercurial and Adidas putting rubber dots on the Predator for more control on the ball. That was the peak of football boot technology. Let's fast forward one more year and it was the same thing again. But it wasn't until autumn of 2023 that Skechers would announce they would enter the football boot market. And the reception of this news, well, it was bland. From first glance, you don't really perceive Skechers for football boots, as you would like Nike or Adidas. Skechers' brand doesn't really have a premium feel to it. They've always been known to have a lower quality product than their competitors, and you'd also get made fun of on the playground if you wore them. The lesson here is that brand recognition is important, and Skechers knew that which is why they would make a key shift in their branding in the future. But they had to be careful and precise, as in the past there has been a few brands that tried to do the same thing, and had failed horribly. Like Lotto, who in 2006 tried rolling out the first laces boot, some technology never before seen. But the execution on it was terrible. The upper was made of uncomfortable plastic, the touch on the ball was rough, and the sole plate was stiff. A decade later, Adidas tried to create some new technology making the lightest football boot ever, but they also failed miserably. The lightest football boots in the world will fall apart after just a few matches. So Skechers had to make something new, high quality and premium, and at the same time, eye-catching to consumers. So Skechers began to drop some designs, and many iterations later, they would finally drop in September of 2023. But not in the way that you would expect. Before they officially released their boots, they rolled out prototypes to a few of their endorsed athletes. One of who is the best striker in the Bundesliga right now. You could probably guess it's Harry Kane. For a good week or two, people were stuck trying to guess what mystery boots he was wearing. And then Skechers finally came out with the truth, releasing their first three models. The Skechers XKS01, which is a power boot made for a precise touch on the ball, and a quality design that is meant to last. This boot's also available in an option with the collar, like the Mercurial that is supposed to provide an upgrade to ankle support. Their third model in their lineup that they have released is the Skechers Razor Boot, which features a carbon-infused sole plate for the utmost responsiveness and energy return. This boot mirrors the Adidas X line and is almost too close to compare. Skechers originally rolled out in the UK and the EU, and they caught a lot of football fans by surprise because Skechers didn't roll out a janky cheap football boot for your local rec players. These boots were meant for a professional level. It kind of reminds me of the old Nike Material 10. I actually think that the Skechers Razor is a very good boot. I've tested a lot of football boots in my time. I think Skechers have properly solidified them as, you know, a credible brand when it comes to making football boots. Even the VP of product development at Skechers, Greg Smith, said that Skechers may be a breakthrough brand in the football space, but we are committed to the sport and look forward to growing and evolving in our offerings in the years to come. This pivot in brand identity had all the right plans and products to become successful, but how were they going to get their name out there? The football boot market was extremely competitive for brands just starting out, and traditional marketing would probably not be super effective. But there were two words that stuck out to Skechers. Those words were athlete endorsements. Athlete marketing has been around for years, ever since the early 2000s. Messi has been loyal to the Adidas brand with many signature boots. The same goes for Ronaldo with Nike, who has made the Mercurial line famous. Having these famous players at the face of their brands is what grew their profits so much. As what kid didn't want to wear the same football boots as their favorite player growing up? If these same principles could be applied to Skechers, there was an immense potential for growth, and they had the perfect target to put as the face of their brand. Harry Kane had been signed by Nike in 2018, signing a long-term deal with the American brand for millions of euros, and he would be the face of their phantom line for years, but ultimately living in the shadows of Ronaldo and Neymar. And after some complications, he left Nike in 2023, along with many other players like Sterling, Delo, and more, but that's a whole other video on its own. Harry Kane would then sign his lifetime deal with Skechers and would become the face of the brand, getting to exclusively wear the XKX01. The news of this signing would be a complete turnaround of Harry Kane's image, and there was a bit of controversy about the real reason Harry Kane signed for Skechers. But, from a business standpoint, it was the perfect publicity move for Skechers, as Harry Kane would become the most expensive Bundesliga signing when he signed for Bayern Munich, 
and his performances on the pitch would not disappoint. So far in the 2023-24 season, he has scored a total of 40 goals, all while wearing Skechers' new boots. Additionally, Skechers would need another player to be the face of their razor boot, someone who is young, quick, explosive, someone that embodied the true purpose that the football boot was made for. And the perfect candidate would be Anthony Alanga. In an interview done by Skechers, he described the boots as uh, they're brazy, they're cool, and um, which sums up the approach Skechers was going to make, trying to appeal to the young generation of footballers, which is exactly the reason they have signed so many young and relatively unheard of players to their brand, like Jesse Derry, Wilson S. Bryan, and many other young ballers. But targeting the youth in ads is something harder said than done. Nike and Adidas have been doing this for years with major success, so Skechers would have to be creative in their advertisements, now that they had the athlete branding on lock. If you've been a football fan for some time, I'm sure you remember the old Nike advertisements like The Winner Stays On, or when the team of the best footballers had to save the world by beating a team of evil robots. Even Ronaldinho's Tiempo ad would hit the crossbar like three times in a row. Adidas also had a few good ones too with the Messi and Paul Pogba ads, and their social media campaign for the Adidas Ace line, which was popularized by Mesut Ozil and these famous videos. These ads were nostalgic, they had a story and made you excited to play football whether it was in their brand of boots or not. They just fostered a sense of joy around the sport and had a lot of substance and made their company seem more human rather than just a product. But nowadays these creative adverts with subtle product placement have been swapped out for ads that immediately just want to shove their products in your face and sell you their football boots. The corporate companies have completely made a switch away from these fun nostalgic type of ads, mainly because of social media and short form content. But Skechers have taken the opposite approach, bringing back the style of exciting and out of the box promotions that we used to see all the time, while combining the elements of short form content and social media. The first ad that mainly caught my eye was the one of Anthony Alanga, in the new laser comfort color they have just released. It starts with Alanga in a barber shop just getting a haircut, and after the barber mentioned him being comfy, I like the boots, huh? goes into a daydream about how great the laser comfort boots are. While there is more of an emphasis on the boots in this ad, it still brings back memories of those old Nike ads I mentioned earlier. But their biggest campaign has to have been the big tournament they hosted in collaboration with the Rising Ballers YouTube channel. There were hundreds of highlight reel clips of people just getting cooked, and all while everyone was wearing the new Skechers boots and Skechers merch, amounting in millions of views across all platforms. Campaigns like this is what attracted so many people to Nike and Adidas brands, so it seems like we could see that growth from Skechers. Because honestly, Skechers is completely reviving their brand and innovating the world of football boots. There are not a lot of new brands making big moves like this in the football industry, so it will be interesting to see whether Skechers will find success or completely fail in the world of football. But only time can tell.